We're here at the uh, Green Door Tavern in River North with Keith Giles and uh, David Chase to talk about the West Loop and the South Loop. When I was a kid, you know, it always seemed like the uh, West Loop was, it looked like it was ready to collapse. I mean, I was, I've been a kid for a while, but um, it really looked tired and the infrastructure just seemed totally worn out. And to me, when I, when I noticed things spruce up a little was the uh, Democratic Convention no question. in 96. No question. What sort of state is the, is the infrastructure? Uh, you know, it wasn't just the, it just wasn't the convention. It was the demolition of the old stadium, the construction of the new stadium. That's actually what introduced me in and our firm to the West Loop. I was photographing and coming back east on Jackson. I saw that Ted Mazzoli, you know Ted, was building new townhomes at the corner of Jackson and Ashland. This is in 94. I just kind of shook my head. Wow. Went around the block, um, checked it out, found one of those old buildings you're talking about with a hand painted sale, signed for sale by owner and bought it. <laughs> lived, lived, lived those things. But, you know, infrastructure in the West Loop is beyond Randolph Street, which was a huge boom. And Terry Teal and the mayor were great in pulling that together. Oh, I mean, Randolph Street's, you know, new street lights, curves, streets. Um, and you can see over the medians now. Yeah, well, the medians are good. But, but you know, I, I think that, that, that overall, some of the infrastructure in the city is tired, particularly the sewer system. And, 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 and so new development tools are being put in place, you know, water retention, um, which adds the cost to our construction. But I think it's good for the overall uh, city. Um, you know, I, but, but I, I think that the, the infrastructure is pretty uh, pretty well in place to handle the rate of growth that, that we've, we've seen in the West Loop because you, you can you can get out of the neighborhood through some major arteries. Randolph's a great one way west. Okay? Washington, major thoroughfare, great one way east. What I find is amazing living in a neighborhood is that people who come from the suburbs going through the convention center will get off at two locations. Ogden, much fewer people get off at Ogden or Madison. And heading westbound, you have bumper to bumper traffic on Madison. If I have 50% of the traffic on Monroe, one block over, but yet over on Adams Street, you might see 10% of the traffic occurring on the night of a game going one way west on Adams. They're all bumper to bumper on Madison. People coming in from the suburbs don't get it, but the flow of east-west streets in the West Loop, getting around, it's great for bringing people in and out. And, and, and you know, we're, we're, we're continually amazed on what traffic goes on Madison, which, which really isn't ideal because of the planters. It's really been cut down from a two, four-lane street to a two-lane street, and it's, it's, over, it's overused. But you, again, once again, you have Monroe, and you have Adams to help facilitate that. And, and to get out of the neighborhood, you have the Eisenhower and the Kennedy and, and, and of course, Ogden. And, and uh, so, so it's, it's a uh, pretty efficient traffic pattern. Well, you, you already said the mayor lived in your neighborhood, so I didn't know if I needed to ask him about infrastructure. I figured it was just a, a, <laughs> just a done deal. Yeah. Um, you know, I, the, the, the second, other than getting the grocery store, the, the most important thing that happened in the South Loop in the late 90s was the extension of Roosevelt Road to Lakeshore Drive. People probably don't remember that Roosevelt actually ended at Michigan Avenue. And um, there was no way to get from Lakeshore Drive to the expressways other than going f further north or south. But by uh, making that extension, it not only uh, made it much more convenient to get from Lakeshore Drive to you know, 1994 and the Eisenhower, but provided the traffic pattern for all the retail. So that was a, a, a huge, a huge positive to the South Loop, and really spurred a lot of development. You know, as far as um, Madison Street and so forth, I suggest that people take public transportation. So <laughs> I agree with that. All right. One question for the audience, uh, David. Uh, Mr. Jones, would you explain to uh, our audience why anybody would have to be crazy over the South Loop? And Keith, would you explain to our audience why anybody would have to be crazy over the West Loop? All right, well, th this is a very, you know, the, 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 and, and uh, listen, I'm, I'm going to speak from my own perspective. Well, I, I'm going to talk from my, my own perspective. I, you know, I live in the West Loop, okay? I, I, I bought a loft building. I used to live on the top floor of my own loft building. I, I sense have expanded it, and I live in a very interesting 
single family home with lots of green space and outdoors. Okay. And, and we try to bring that same flavor to our communities in the West Loop. I am not a high rise dweller. If the only choice I had in the South Loop, if the only choice I had was a high rise, and that was the only choice somebody else had, I'd, I'd tell them you'd have to be nuts to live in that concrete canyon of, of high rises. But people like high rise living. So you know, I, I'm not going to take the gloves off too much. I, I wouldn't do it because I like the openness and the boutique nature of, 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 of my neighborhood. So if you, if you want to live amongst you know, huge concrete towers with glass in them, with you know, two to four to five to six hundred people per building, and you like the amenities of that, go for it. If you want a lower density, um, more boutique type neighborhood that doesn't have some, may not have some of the trappings, uh, then, then come to the West Loop. But that, that's, you know, don't want to take the gloves off too far. I, I think I'm moving back into the city. Tell me why I'd be crazy to live in the West Loop. Well, you know, I'm not going to lower myself to David's standards uh, and start bashing this up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think oh, please, bash. I'm not going to bash. Uh, you know, the city is a, a, an awesome place to live. And, uh, you know, as developers, you know, we are lucky to be doing business in this city. It's uh, very, very, like we were talking about the city of Chicago, the planning department, the mayor's office, uh, the alderman, everyone. We've had a, a great experience. Uh, working with all of those groups over the years, and uh, just feel blessed to be to be doing what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing, and uh, have had you know a, a lot of fun doing it. Well, you know, I would just say that you know, in the South Loop, we have a uh, very diverse group of people that appears to be a bit more diverse than the West Loop. Um, we have a, a bit more substantial retail than the West Loop does, and we're closer to the lake. And we all know that the lake is the biggest magnet in the city, not only from a view perspective, but from an amenity perspective. And um, with everything that's happening in the South Loop over the next decade, with uh, all of the development, all of the amenities being filled in, as well as the Olympics, there's going to be a huge amount of infrastructure money poured into the, the streets that I don't think the West Loop is going to have. The West Loop had the Democratic Convention, and they got their infrastructure improvements uh, from the city, uh, you know, a few years ago. I think that you'll see just with what I talked about, the zoning of the hotels and and a major infrastructure uh, investment will be made in the South Loop in uh, September of 2009 when we do get that uh, that call from the Olympic Committee saying that Chicago is the next uh, is the site of the 2016 Olympics. And, and just a brief follow-up on, on that, I, 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 and I didn't mean to bash. If you were only going to buy a town home, remember Thrush. I mean a high rise in the South Loop. The South Loop has a wide variety of housing styles, as you mentioned. And I'll tell you, one of the gems of the city is Dearborn Park, too. If you want a single family home, you want a town home, be able to let your kids go out to a park without having to supervise them. I have friends living in that community. It is a wonderful place to live. So I, you know, not not the bash. Um, and, and the South Loop, there are a lot of synergies between both communities. I think both communities thrive as a result of one another. You can't beat the lake. People love the lake. It's, it's one of the hottest areas in the world, not, less the, you know, not, not to mention the city. And you know, I just encourage people to, to look at both communities and buy what fits. Buy what fits your personal lifestyle. And Franklin Giles Keith is, is, a, is a very well regarded and reputable developer. Build great product. As, well, you you work in the as, as, well, as does Thrush. And you know, I, I think that you, you can't go wrong um, buying from either developer. Forget the others, but buy, <laughs> buy from Keith or from us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. You know, thanks a lot, guys. It was All right. very important.